bit after ten past twelve. Good afternoon to you. My guest for lunch this afternoon... I can't. I, I, I physically can't talk about Alton Towers, Bianca, without wheeling that out. I love that. That's great. Best ad campaign ever, obviously. Like I don't hear it every day. Yeah. Oh, do you have to get a monorail into work? <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> Bianca, is it Summer? Am I saying it right? Summer, yes. Bianca Summer is, uh, but you basically run Alton Towers, right? I do, I do. I have the best job in the world. What is officially your job title? A divisional director. For Merlin. Merlin Entertainment. And the division being the Alton Towers Resort. The Alton Towers Resort. One of the UK's top tourist attractions. Absolutely, it's a magical place. It's a big gig. It is. It what is. were you doing immediately before that? Um, well, I've been in I've been in the industry for thirty years. I know. So I came out from Australia um, after after spending about eight years in the Middle East, um, and then I went home for about a year and reconnected with the family and did all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, and then I moved to to the UK. Did you apply to be at Alton Towers, or did they come looking for you? A bit of a mixture, really. But I started having conversations with Merlin and and um, and then just looking at portfolios and and you know opportunities and and then yeah. uh, then that that was the one. Had you heard of Alton Towers before? I had so much so, having been in the industry yeah, for yeah, yeah. such a long time. So because we all know it in this country, oh. I just wonder if in in the global industry, it's it's known as a as a resort. To Absolutely, look at. I, I well and truly knew about it. And as as Merlin was progressing, and with the attractions that have been in there, like they're world class attractions. So when you're in the industry, you're you're part of that network where you where you're watching ride launches all over the world so yeah I, I very much knew about it so alton towers um with that a move to the uk yes. and to derbyshire yes ashbourne yes last time i saw you you said you were curious about shrovetide how was that <laughs> yeah i wasn't there oh really <laughs> i watched it on the news i mean news, some though. might call that a shrewd move <laughs> i watched it on the news you ain't getting in or out of town for two <laughs> yeah. days yeah no i think i was at work <laughs> wow um so you enjoy in life in in Derbyshire? I love it. It's beautiful. Like I mean, I don't even go through any traffic lights to get to work. I have a beautiful twenty five minute drive um, from the resort. So and you know, like I'm going through all of the the fields, and you know, I'm seeing animals along the way, and the, and the sun, and you know, the clouds and the rain, all of it. Like I just, it's a beautiful place. Where in Australia are you from then? Where did you grow up? I, I, I was born in Melbourne, but raised and spent most of my life in Sydney. And then when I was old enough to kind of like move Actually on. Actually in Sydney? I mean, yeah, you're a city Sydney, girl. Yeah, Sydney, yeah. Sydney, Balmain, Leichhardt and, you know, around all that place. And my sister's over on the beach side. Um, so I sort of have family all up and down the coast. But then I also spent a lot of time in Queensland, which is where all the theme parks were. Hollywood on the Gold Coast, as they call it. So, um, what, so were you a fan? A growing up of, of a theme park, did you like a coaster and a thrill yeah, ride when I, you were younger? Yeah, I definitely went to parks when I was younger. You know, like we did a couple of big Disney trips and a, some trips to the USA. Like, I, I don't think it was. I wasn't, think it that's wasn't, important. Wasn't the only you, you, trip you've we got had. to have a handle right on the excitement of going to a, a, a place like that and what a what an occasion it is. Yeah, I think the environment for me and and being in groups of people was was one part, and then just experiences and and characters and performance and creative and production. And I think all of that, like, you know, in high school, I was very much in all of the creative subjects. So a lot of visual arts, a lot of drama, a lot of production. But then I was also on all the committees and part of all of the groups and, you know, just all of involved that. So in just everything. Sort of like, yeah, it kind of just meshed together. You know, student council, all those types of things, like just groups of people doing things together. Um, so it kind of makes sense now that like, now that I'm older and when I reflect back on. So did you want to be an actor or an artist no, or something? No, no, I never did. Just I loved to do. it, yeah. you know. But I, you know, I certainly, um, I certainly loved it. But I never really thought, oh, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do. Did you have an idea a as a teenager? Teaching. I thought I was wow. going to be a teacher. When yeah. did that? When did that change? Then do you think? Uh, on the first day when I got the job as the ride operator, <laughs> like literally on that day. I, Where was that? I, at Australia's Wonderland, which is like kind of like. A, a version of Alton Towers Resort, I guess, for Australia. It was the biggest theme park uh, in Australia at the time. And, uh, yeah, I went into this induction um, as and got the job as the ride operator and a group of the senior managers came in and I was like, wow, this is like a real job. Like this is this is the big time. And, and yeah, I went home and I spoke to my dad and I said, I, I think this is it. Like this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to lead a theme park one day. And he was like, 
what coffee did they feed you? <laughs> After um, one he was day. like, you'd been there for two hours. I hadn't even touched a ride panel or, you know, done a shift. It was just purely the induction. But I just said to him, I just know. And he was Why really, did he you was, know? What he, was it I about just, it? I don't know. Like, I think just they started speaking about, like, what, what it was going to be like when you went out into the park and what they were going to do and train you and, and all those things. And I was like, this is a real job and this is what I'm going to do. I just, I just knew. Um, and I never, I've never doubted it ever since, you know, like I'm one of those people that kind of just, if they needed volunteers for things, you know, if they said we want to move people like in different businesses and I just always said yes. And I, because what is the route? Never, what is the path from ride operator to, to divisional it, it, director? It, it, and learning, you know? it literally is like, you know, I became, I was in rides for, for quite a number of years, um, and for the first, so I was at, at Australia's Wonderland for five years. And when I left in the fifth year there, I was the attractions manager. I was the youngest attractions manager that they'd ever had at the park. So it was just progress, promotion. Um, I truly believe let the work be your noise. Um, so let people see what you're able to do. And um, yeah, I just, as I said, I just never doubted myself for a second and I, and I, and I stayed true to it. What do you think you love most about parks? Is it the thrills? I, I, is it the entertainment? Is I, it the the magic and the theming? Yeah, I think it's the overall environment. And because I have I have I've worked in every single department, I've worked in every single role, you know, so I have a real respect for how it operates behind the scenes and what it takes to be a team and you know, so I just, I love it. I, I love, like, that I can walk out of my office and go into the park and see people having your the office? best time. Where, it's just pe- above people Tower who know Street. Towers. People who know that, it's but, yeah. just above Tower Street. So, so I what's can, downstairs from your office? Um, The coffee lounge. Okay, yeah. On the corner. Yeah, yeah. yeah sort of about about that area, box office wow. sort of area. Um, so as soon as I can hear when the when the announcement happens and the gates open and then and then I look out the window and I can see people running down or walking yeah, down or getting having an a insight now photo. into why that music does your head in I know. though. <laughs> I, but I love it. I love it. For the last couple of weeks, I've been listening to the the canons of Pirate Takeover and then. And then the first week after we had finished that event, there was, you know, it's been turned off, obviously, and it's just silence because the park's closed until we reopen. So it was just like, oh, I get real sad. <laughs> and the park <laughs> opens again like a week on Saturday, is yeah, it? Yeah, 15th of March. So what's going on right 16th, now? Sorry, 16th is it of March. busy now? No, it's quiet now. So the, yeah. the hotels are open, obviously. We've got um, um, guests at the hotels and for the water park. So we have some packages there for people for like short breaks. And then, yeah, we reopen on Saturday the 16th of March um, and we have Alton After Dark. So we've extended the hours. We're going to trade up until 8 o'clock at night so you get rides in the dark. Is it weird being at a park when there's nobody there? It is, it's really quiet. It is really quiet because you do get used to, um, obviously, just, you know, having lots of people and lots of noise. But obviously that's also a good time for us to get things done and move things around and do all that sort of stuff. But it, but it is strange. Rebuild Nemesis. But it is strange when there's no one there. Uh, what's it called now? Nemesis Reborn. Nemesis Reborn. You've been on it yet? Not yet. What's wrong soon, with you? Soon. Do you, get, do you get first dibs if you want? <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. How many times have you been on it? Uh, Nemesis. Yeah. So many. How many? So many. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, it reached a point where it was so loved and yet uh, working so smoothly and not the newest thing that you could at times go on and then go straight back on again. Yeah. So multiple times. Yeah, it's been really great. Like the last over the last 12 months just to to watch it be rebuilt and you know be on the ground and be part of all the project meetings and conversations that we have about it so i'm so excited for the 16th first date i ever went on with my now wife was to alton towers to an m people gig and the rides were open and we went on the front row of nemesis and she hates coasters there you go (laughs) and you've never looked back so i love nemesis i love that let's play some music chat some more bianca summit is my guest for lunch this afternoon at the moment doing lunch with Bianca Samet today. Uh, Bianca is divisional director uh, at Alton Towers Resort. Basically, you're the, you're the you run Alton Towers, right? You're the you're the, you're the top as far as actually at Alton Towers. You are in charge. Yes, I am. How many people work for Alton Towers Resort? Uh, in the main season, we can get up to like two and a half thousand. What's a responsibility, yeah, isn't it? I love and how many visitors? And in like you know August Bank Holiday or something. Millions of smiles every year. <laughs> Millions. You must get people moaning about some weird stuff as well. Oh, look, I love feedback. You know, that's how we improve. So yeah, that's that's the custom, that's the that's the official diplomatic yeah. answer. <laughs> Behind the scenes, there must now and again be something. Do you, 
Can't believe they complained about that. Are they what? I think we see the same things, you know, and we constantly want to improve and do things. And, you know, I love feedback. I think I think it's brilliant, you know, and I, there's so many different forms nowadays from when I first started. Mm. Um, you know, I remember used to si- I used to sit in an office and go through letters, like handwritten yeah. letters um, to, you know, now just obviously getting feedback on social media and lots of different, lots of different ways. I'll so. tell you what I'm impressed by with Alton Towers over the years. It's not my job to endorse or advertise, but <laughs> I, the way they've dealt with the wasps, Go to Alton Towers in the summer, stand in the queue, three hours with wasps used to be a thing. Now, you don't queue that long, and the wasps, for some reason, aren't such an issue. I don't know if you're crumping down the litter or what it is, but... Yeah. Dealt with the wasps. Yeah. <laughs> you watch, I'll find myself there queuing for Wicker Man this year and being pestered by them and well, being my a, words. Being Australian, everybody talks to me about Australia and the snakes and the spiders and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know, you have so. stuff that can kill you. you know, what's a wasp? <laughs> we don't like them. Um, so, yeah, you, you mentioned, what was the, was it Wonderland, you said, was the first part? Yeah, that's where I to. started, Australia's Wonderland, um, which is an enormous, it's Australia's the largest yeah. theme park. What are, the, what are the biggest rides there? Oh, they had Vacoma rides and Interman rides, they had a massive Yeah, drop they're tower. manufacturers, I like yeah, ride names, what yeah. are they called? The Demon, Space Probe 7, <laughs> Bounty's Revenge, Space look, it's all Probe coming back to 7. me now, so yeah, so many, and um, and we had a water park there as well, so I, wo- I worked in the water park too, and we had a massive wild wildlife park so it was a real mixture of stuff no hotels back then um but but yeah it was it was an incredible place it doesn't actually operate anymore were you involved in in starting a, a wet and wild from scratch yes i was so i worked with village roadshow in australia which is um quite a large entertainment company with movies and uh, theme parks and they had wet and wild um, on the Gold Coast, which is their water park. They also had one in Hawaii. They had some ones over in the US. And then they did a de- we did a design and build for Sydney. So we opened Sydney's, um, Australia's largest water park. So I got to stand there from, a, from an empty site and, you know, choose colours of slides and name the attractions. And I drew signs on and... and um, things on napkins in coffee shops and and brought them to life and it was like roller coaster tycoon in real life uh, literally it was an incredible experience and um you know um i just have really treasured memories of that time and i learned so much and and yeah we opened we opened an incredible water park and yeah it's great. So, and over the years, I'm assuming your job has, has meant some some onerous things like, oh, you're going to have to go to Dubai and look at this coaster, or you're going to have to go to Hawaii and see how this park <laughs> yeah. does it. You know? I've definitely travelled. Um, I've definitely travelled with the job, which has been great, and and going and you know going and being in theme parks or um, what well, they call it benchmarking. Actually, um, that's the official term, the internal term. When you go, I'm going to go benchmarking to Disney. I'm going to go ven- benchmark, you know, to other parks around the world. So yeah. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. How old is your daughter now? She's eleven. Wow. She's eleven. So yeah, she's like she she had for the when she was quite young, she was like you just go on the slides, don't you? She's just like that's what you do all yeah. day, and you're just going on the rides. Um, but you know, she gets to she gets to have that life, the life of a theme. Park I was going to say that is, eleven uh, now is a really cool age to have mum run oh, on towers. She, I, I just <laughs> I just love it. Like and and she has a perspective which I really value too. And I think that was the other part for me when you know like mid career and 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 uh, had a baby and all that. Sort Sort of stuff, and then I went back to work after maternity leave. Your perspective kind of like it does it changes as a leader, as you know, as doing what I do when you're delivering experiences. What do you mean it changes? Well, you just I just started to appreciate different sight lines, really, like her perspective of you know what a character looks like to her, what colors does she see, you know, what actually translates in terms of the experience, and, and what does she take in versus what you know what you do as an adult um some and, industries are easier than others when you've taken a break to to become a mum to get back into yeah what's, what's, well, what's yours like well actually mine's really interesting because up until i i was working at SeaWorld at the time and i was teaching probably about 20 colleagues how to drive nickelodeon floats for a brand new parade i was heavily pregnant um at the time climbing in and out of these um floats and uh, and then I ended up having so she heard SpongeBob basically when she was you know inside yeah, yeah. so that says a lot about her personality <laughs> really for sure so I was still very much Formative. on my feet and doing things creatively wow. and then I had about four months off uh, and then during during my maternity leave the the CEO at the time called me and then that's when they they called me in and I was like oh this is interesting I haven't quite this come back yet way. this could go either way and they called me back and they said look we're going to build this water park in Sydney and we want you to 
um, take it on. And I was like, okay, this is what I wasn't expecting this. So okay, yeah, I'm. And this I'm was in, wet and wild. This right? was wet and wild, okay. Sydney. So I packed up the family and we and we relocated down to Sydney, which is where I was originally from. Anyway, yeah. and can you believe it? The water park in Sydney is ten minutes down the road from Australia's Wonderland. So I was literally back, you know, in exactly the it's same full circle, neighborhood. But it isn't. Yeah, yeah, full circle, and it was just really, it was really incredible um, to be back in that full circle moment of where it all started. So, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> when your business is leisure, yes. What What does your leisure look like? What do you do for fun <laughs> outside of being in the theme yeah. park? <laughs> um, I mean, I go to. I, I love experiences. I love travel. We've travelled a lot. Um, you know, we've done the big trips um, as a family. So my daughter's my daughter's tra- well travelled for an eleven year old. Um, so I'd say travelling experiences, shows, museums, immersives, like anything that's kind of like yeah, yeah. visually, you know, um, I can get my hands on. Then I like to do that too. And um, yeah, sometimes I just like to also go with somewhere where there's no noise, you know, as well. Like yeah, honestly, I spend so much time in it. It's like being a uh, introverted extrovert like you know I like the quiet as well <laughs> on your questionnaire you said that things that you'd, you'd be comfortable talking about you know Rolton Towers obviously leadership people experiences yeah Kylie Minogue oh my favorite <laughs> Australian honestly I have been a super fan since I, I, I can't even like since Neighbours oh since Neighbours for sure I have Charlene. every album I've been to every concert really yeah I've seen every single one um, yeah I just I just love her she's my she's my icon she's my musical. did you see her at the Brits at the weekend I did see I watched it yesterday actually yeah. so um, yeah my husband put it on he was like yeah I was like global yeah global icon he was like well I was at, this was last night it was at the O2 I know all about it <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, I've definitely um, helped her fund <laughs> one of those people that have helped fund um, her success. But I just love her. I think she's incredible. Um, and, you know, so I moved to the UK and some of my girlfriends back in Australia were like, are you moving to go closer to Kylie? And I'm like, maybe, <laughs> just maybe. It's a benefit yeah. of it, maybe. And look at her. She's still going and, like, just, she's just, she owns her craft, doesn't she? She's just fantastic. I mean, as a leader, I presume you're you're very good at striking deals. <laughs> striking so I'm deals. just I'm just wondering, right? If I were to play some Kylie now, could <gasps> I get a, an annual pass to Alton Towers? Do you reckon we could sort that out? <laughs> I might put you in the running for one. <laughs> I will definitely play this anyway. I'm I'm a man to trust. Um, <laughs> Bianca Summer is my guest for lunch. We'll talk some more after. Can't get you out of my head. I mean, it is pretty iconic, isn't it? Bianca's doing the moves now. Uh, <laughs> Bianca Summer is my guest for lunch this afternoon. Big Kylie fan. Can't get you out of my head on BBC Radio Derby. Bianca is uh, in charge of Alton Towers. I said earlier on, like one of the UK's biggest tourist attractions in terms of visitor numbers. It's like always in the top five, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tower of London, Madame Tussauds, yeah, we're up Alton there. Towers. Yeah, we're up there. So is it um, is it is it about the best gig you could have beyond you know if you're just running one resort, is that one of the best jobs? Yeah, you could have? I th- I th- for me too, it's about just you know all the things that we offer. So the water park, the hotels, you know, the historic gardens, the tower ruins, you know, and the theme parks and rides and attractions. So I'm really always I'm interested in the you know entire portfolio. Um, it's been a long time since I've ever just looked after you know like yeah. one park. I know that sounds weird, but I think as you progress and you kind of like expand and and then it's about, you know, more experiences and and how you do that on a bigger scale. So Alton Towers Resort is just it's a dream it's a dream come true. I stayed at the hotel in Which um, one? Uh the main one. Alton. The Alton, yeah. the Alton yeah. Towers Hotel cuz I mean I didn't pay for it. You guys put me up there when you launched the thing for Scarefest <laughs> yeah, in the autumn. Yeah. You know, we had a great time, yeah, though. Yeah, so, so great. It's an atmosphere, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it's such an atmosphere. So um, what, what an incredible event. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> and um, Alton Towers this year, then, as you say, uh, park opens 16th, next weekend, 16th. Saturday the 16th, yes. Nemesis new is, is new, but it's not new, but it is new. It's the great debate, isn't it? Yeah. Like it's, it's a is retrack. Is it just a different colour? Yeah, it's is re-tra- it a, it's retrack. Is the track actually entirely new? Every piece of it is yeah, new. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. But it's the same layout. Yeah, same layout. I mean, because the, I mean, the the landscape is carved out that way, you know. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, it is the same layout. Um, and yeah, we're really excited. We're really excited. You know, it's it's, it's an extension of the story, and um, you know, everybody's like 
really hyped and there's I a just whole love it. I mean obviously just people that love going to places like yeah. that look forward to maybe doing it once a year that is one thing there is a fandom isn't there there, there is, is a, a hardcore fandom. there are you know YouTube channels and all sorts someone just tagged me the other day online and and someone had just done a nemesis reborn tattoo on on his arm like full of the of the coaster of the logo and it's like I, Before I, I love even writing it. it, I love it. <laughs> like I, I just, I just love the commitment. I love the, I love how nostalgic people are about, you know, not only just the entire resort, but also about this story of Nemesis. And, you know, I've spent time with John Wardley, who is just incredible, the original ride designer and creator. And and um, yeah, I mean, wow, it's it's great. What's the uh, what's the area where there's thirteen and, and all that dark forest? Dark forest, yeah. yeah. What's going on there? Yeah, Is there something dark afoot? Forest. I love the dark forest. Is there a new project? <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to come along on the 16th, don't you, and have a walk around there the park. A new project? Is there <laughs> something coming? I'm never going to answer that. <laughs> Which sort of answers it. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Have you? I, I know it's a long-term game, isn't it? You know, running a resort like Orton Towers. But is, is there always, you know, a long-term vision of right? Well, a, and in two years we need to be here, and in five you, years we've got to be yeah, there. Yeah, there's and, definitely that. We do a lot of work on that. So as much as I'm in the park, I'm also doing a lot of strategy strategy and a lot of other, you know like just business business work in terms of like where do we want to be what is two what's two years what three years what four years and and planning it out so uh, and and i mean that's that's an amazing experience to be part of as well um on any portfolio where you're able to kind of like lead the way on that and and uh and create <laughs> Can we have the log flume back? <laughs> What's that all about? I mean, I love the Wicker Man, but oh, everyone misses the log flume. What was your earliest memory of Alton Towers Resort? Like, Corkscrew. How old were you? First time I ever went was on a, a sort of youth club coach trip, and I, I was terrified. I wasn't going to go on and anything. And your friends made you go and on it? And somebody dragged me onto the corkscrew, <gasps> and I never looked back. Oh, my goodness. And even now, I love going with my son and going on the Smiler. And it, I mean, I just come off the Smiler laughing. What's his favourite ride? Uh, probably Smiler. Smiler. My daughter is the Wicker Man. She loves I sitting in the back. I don't get the Wicker Man. She it's loves. great, but it's yeah, it's not the best. Yeah, I think the I miss the, the I miss the Black Hole. Did you ever know the Black Hole I, back I've, in the day? I've seen a lot of pictures and stuff and read a lot yeah. about the Black Hole. Yeah. That was terrifying. So much, so Three and a half hours of queued for that so the much, year it opened. So much history. So <laughs> I much wouldn't history. even bother now because I'm just <laughs> too impatient in life. <laughs> You'd buy a fast pass. Yeah, I might. I, mean, <laughs> I hate the people that do that. I hate that. When you get to near the front, then there's like, oh, hang on, these people are cutting in front. But they, when, when, like, you know, the press department say, do you want to come and do you want to have a fast track? And you're like, oh, go on then. But then you get really self conscious. Like, I'm one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> does it does it cause a bit of friction sometimes that whole oh, yeah, we people can afford to push in? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, it's global, isn't it? It's not just it's not just at our park. That's 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 how it is everywhere. So now. an interesting conversation Skip the, the other day about anywhere yeah, about people saying, oh, there must be a way in this day and age of, of avoiding queues and doing virtual systems and all that. And then someone said, well, if you didn't have to queue for anything, you'd have done it all in about a couple yeah, but of I, hours. I, but I think it happens in a lot of different ways. And there's pre-sales now, you know, yeah. like to to music events and like there, there's just so many different avenues of of. Of advancing to the front or... So you and, and the whole team, how much of your life do you have to spend sort of looking what everyone else is doing in the industry? I mean, but I love that and that feels very natural to me anyway. Like I'm, I'm constantly kind of like following those types of pages or what's happening or insights or learning from other people. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's fairly global. What's the best coaster in the UK that isn't at Alton Towers? Ooh, I'm going to always tell you it's at Alton Towers <laughs> Resort. Yeah, but you could you can uh, have you can have the five best in your view if you want. But outside of Alton Towers, what do you like somewhere yeah, else? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely loved Animal Kingdom in the US um, when they opened Pandora. Um, I, I thought that was incredible. I waited five hours for that. Um, that was about two hours to get into the land, and then three hours for the attraction when it very first opened. And that was a sneak peek event too. So yeah. that was like for industry. And yeah, but I but I did wait. And I remember I remember somebody saying to me, "Oh, I've heard that everybody's really emotional when they get off that attraction, and people are crying." And I was like, "People crying? Like I've been in this industry for so long. Like that is just not possible." Anyway, so I I waited all of that time, and I got off I got off the attraction, and I started walking out the exit. And I started crying. Would you believe? And I was with I was with a colleague at the time, who was very new to the industry, who was who I was sort of like uh, mentoring. And uh, and he was like, "Are you crying?" And I was like, <laughs> "I 
feel really emotional. No. And I was quite like, <laughs> and um, do you know why? I can't believe I you just shared that analyzed, story. Publicly. You must have analyzed why though. It I affected just, you that like, way. I just was like, because you want to bottle that, right? Yeah, I just. I mean, I, I loved the movies. I thought they did an incredible job in bringing that to life. I thought the visuals were just the technology and just the way that it just made me feel was just like so overwhelming. And uh, yeah, look, it was only for a minute, but it definitely did. It did make me emotional. I think just the lead up to it as well. So again, yeah, you have to bottle that type of stuff. And, you know, I think Nemesis Reborn is going to be emotional for for people for sure, based on everything that I'm seeing, everything that I'm reading, the hype that's building and just, you know, just being back back in the park and and seeing it um you know we've had we've had yeah I, I'm, I'm just I'm just excited I, ca- I can't wait to talk to everybody on the day and be there as part of that you know I was I, w- I wasn't emotional when I saw the trains but I was like quite like when I saw the first train go over um over the lift I was just like wow this is this is impressive this is a this is a beautiful coaster and and a big operation like that retracking a roller coaster yeah. god knows how many zeros are on the end of the price tag for doing that and various different contractors involved yeah. it's got to be done in time for the opening of the park yeah. right it's, it's is that fraud and or does it run like clockwork? No, and it's years and years of, you know, not only from the planning but the conversations and then the day-to-day on the ground and your timelines and, you know, keeping everything on track. We have an incredible team and, um, yeah, and, and that's, and you know, and as a result of that we're opening on the 16th, which was the day that we'd always planned for, you know, but it's it's every day, every hour. It absolutely counts. You know, it's working through the weather and, and all of those types of things that actually happen in that process and how it all comes together is 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 um, an amazing thing to be part of. If I were to ask anybody in, uh, at the top of any department at Alton Towers, what sort of a leader you are, what do you reckon they'd say? I'd tell you that they would say to you that I'm collaborative, um, that I'm hands-on. I, they would probably also tell you that I'm pretty passionate. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it, I think the other thing is is because I've worked in all of those departments, I have a deep found respect for everything. Every every single job that happens at a, at a resort um, is important, you, you know. So, uh, and I've done lots of things where I've gone back in and and you know, like I spent uh, half a day in housekeeping and learned how I, I had to learn. I wanted to master the bed making and how long does it take and, and what's supposed to, it took me about four rooms it took me about four rooms till I could actually get it down pat um, but I just I have a deep found respect for everything that happens and everybody's job and how it all comes together What's your goal? What's are you, are you still goal? ambitious? Do you want to be you know moving up the, the company and, and bigger responsibilities or do you just well, being in charge of the theme park was my dream, was absolutely my dream yeah. job. But it was really interesting when I did get that. When I did get that, um, which is um, in Abu Dhabi, which is where I become became the theme park lead for the first time in my career. I actually remember thinking, "What's what's next?" You know, like w- what happens after all of this time when that's all you've been dreaming about? Well, now it's about doing it, isn't it? And being the very best b- version of yourself. So. I don't sit here going, well, I want to be a CEO one day or, you know, like I, I don't have that aspiration. But then equally, once you've achieved running somewhere that is but, a, as big yeah, as Alton Towers, how do you how do you make it even more successful? There's only so much pie to, to take yeah, a Yeah, that's what, I just love what I do. And and if that's more about teaching and sharing and, and kind of like helping other people, then I'm then I'm all for it. Um, but don't get me wrong, like if if – you know, if someone had the conversation with me and said, hey, we think you could take on more or all that sort of stuff, I'm always going to be curious about it, aren't I? But I don't sit here going, you know, yeah, look, I, I, I want to be the CEO or I want to be anything else. I just want to be the best version of me that I can um, and, you know, deliver experiences. Like, I, I just I want to stay in the industry, you know, like that's what I'm, that's probably what I'm passionate about more so than anything else. I was serious about the past. Save me a seat on uh, Nemesis Reborn. Lovely to see you, Bianca. <laughs> okay. Thank you for coming in. Bye. <laughs> Bianca Summer from Alton Towers, opening for the new season on the 16th.